renovated retirement with Charlie Jewett. Oh no, I think I'm about to have another episode. What do I do with a torn ACL? What do I do with a torn ACL? What do I do with a torn ACL early in the morning? Oh my goodness, not the drunken sailor song from when I was a child. First question, folks, why is it okay for young children to be singing about a drunken sailor? Secondly, why would one of the future verses be shave her belly with a rusty razor? Uh, maybe the question should be, why did why was I raised by hippies? I don't know. I was raised in a small private school run by hippies and bell bottoms uh, called by their first name. One of my teachers literally was named Big Mike. And we used to sit in a dome, which we don't see very many of those anymore, sit in a dome and sing, uh, what shall I do with the drunken sailor? Uh, I don't know what that did to me, but I feel fine. I'm good. I don't know why. Anyway, just felt like I should start the show that way because here I am in Chicago, woke up early in the morning and my knees don't work, or at least one of my knees don't work. I can't walk anymore. I haven't walked in five weeks. Why? Because I lost a fight with a trampoline. <laughs> you should say the other guy. Nope, the trampoline's actually fine. Uh, Charlie, on the other hand, had a lot of snap, crackle, and pop going on in my knee and I can't walk, baby. I cannot walk. My legs just do not work anymore. So I'm awaiting surgery, hopefully, uh, so they can put a piece of a dead guy in my knee. I heard the word cadaver and almost passed out. Uh, I don't know what that means. Hopefully my body will accept it. But for the time being, I am hobbling like a crazy person through the airports, traveling around, doing my seminars like a one-legged flamingo financial advisor doing my best. And it's, uh, it's something. <laughs> it's absolutely something to be seen. But the show must go on, and I have something important to share with you, which is how do we make major decisions? I'm going to show you on this podcast that the way you make major decisions, major you know, financial decisions in your life, or even life decisions, is genius. You guys are geniuses. My phone is ringing. Shut up, phone. I'm doing a podcast, darn it all. Um, it, you're a genius when it comes to this. But, 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 when it comes to the decision, the huge, giant, life-altering decision of who to buy your retirement plan from, who to listen to, where to get your data, how to do your financial and retirement plan, for some reason, all of you take a completely different approach than you do for all of your other major purchasing decisions. Hmm. I wonder why that is. Now, it is hurting you, period. It is absolutely hurting you. But let me jump into it and teach you exactly what I'm talking about so that you know for sure that this is true. Because who cares about my opinion? Opinions are stupid. When it comes to truths, to have an opinion just means you're stupid. If you think two plus two is not four, I do not have a lot of good things to say about you. I don't have a lot of good things to say about people that have opinions about the truth when they say, I hate blank and you should too. And I certainly do not like arrogant people who talk about their opinions as if they are truth. Oh, and a market always goes up 8 to 10%, or God forbid it goes up 12% if you're one of the people that should be in jail that teaches online. I don't like either of those types of people. What I like is the humble sharing of the truth. 2 plus 2 is 4, and I love you. Have a nice day. That's what we're looking for. Let's jump into this. How do you make major decisions, for instance, where your kids attend college? Maybe the house you live in, what home you purchased for your family to live in and have their life experiences. What about the car you drive, all that time you spend in the car? What about the environment, the car, the, the um, experience you've chosen to have as you drive around? How about where you go on family vacations? In those decisions, college, houses, cars, vacation. What's more important, the actual product or results that you get or the provider or the salesman that provides them to you? Would you send your children to an inferior college just because someone you know and trust works in admissions for that college? Would you truly sacrifice their education and the name on their degree, their future forever? Would you compromise and sacrifice because you knew someone in admissions and you trusted them? I don't think you would. Would you live in a house that you don't love? For instance, you tell your realtor, I want a five-bedroom home with a two-car garage. And they say, well, I'm only willing to sell you a three-bedroom home with a one-car garage because that's all we have in inventory. Would you seriously compromise the rest of your life and your family's experience of being alive 
to buy from that realtor because you're related to them, because they work for a company that you like the name of, because you dealt with them last time, because they did a good job at any time prior till now, or because you know, like, and trust them? I don't think you would or should. I think you should say, no, I will have the home I want no matter what realtor I have to go to to get it. Would you drive an inferior car, a car that was not what you wanted, wasn't big enough for your family, wasn't made of the right materials, didn't have the right engine, the right look for what you were trying to accomplish? Would you drive an inferior vehicle because you liked the car salesman and he worked for a company that wasn't allowed to offer you the vehicle you truly, truly wanted? See, in every other major decision, you just figure out, what do I want? And who has it for me? The most important thing is the product, the results, you getting exactly what you want, not whom you buy it from. Now, why does this change? Why does this change in only one area? I'll tell you because it's the evil genius marketers who set up the financial services, uh, whatever, the industry itself, which I've come out against, the whistleblower because it's a rat infested moldy tear down of an industry it needs to be renovated ruling retirement with charlie jewett blah 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 right what's the problem here how come you don't have the retirement that you deserve i there's no question in my mind every single person listening to my voice right now i can give you a better financial plan than you have right now no one will challenge me no one will meet me on tv because they know they're going to be made to look like a buffoon they're going to be embarrassed and lose clients and lose credibility. No one, no one will go head to head with me based on the criteria that I use because they want to steer you into what pays them the most. Well, how do you know what is the best retirement plan? Might I make a suggestion? Might I suggest, and I'm not saying this is a truth. I'm going to say this is my opinion. And you know how I feel about opinions, but you need to form your own. How are you going to measure what's the best retirement plan for you so you can purchase it or work with the right rep or salesman who has it for you instead of living in a home you hate, driving an inferior car, and sending your kids to colleges that you don't want them at. Might I suggest these four criteria? Higher income while you and your spouse are alive. Retirement planning is about income. Your lifestyle will very much be determined by how much discretionary income is left after you pay all of your bills. If your bills are $4,000 a month, and you're getting $6,000 a month right now, you have $2,000 a month basically to create a lifestyle. Wow, could the interruptions get any worse? Shut up, phone. Hope that doesn't happen again. Anyway, live podcasting with Charlie Jewett, the whistleblower. <laughs> I don't know what that is. More income while you're alive. You know, if you're making $6,000 a month and your bills are $4,000, but what if we can jump that to $7,500 a month? Very, very normal for us to do every day here at Renovating Retirement. We jump you up to $7,500 a month instead of $6,000. How much better did your life just get? You went from $2,000 a month discretionary income to spend on fun things and lifestyle to $3,500. That's a boatload more income. I haven't done the math, and I'm not Rain Man, so I'm not doing it in my head. That's a lot more income than you were getting before. So more income while you're both alive? Yes, that's a good criteria. More income for your spouse if one of you passes away. We know they're going to lose one of the Social Securities. They're going to lose some pensions. They're going to lose any annuities that were set up for single lifetime income. And after a couple of years of being a widow, they're going to pay more taxes because they're going to be a single taxpayer instead of a married taxpayer. Wow. Do you even have any idea how well your spouse is going to be taken care of if you pass away? Maybe, maybe not. But the plan with the better income for them, if that happens, is the better plan. More income while you're both alive. More income for the surviving spouse. Yes, those are good. More money available to pay for long-term care without it coming out of your pocket. Sure, if your net worth is a million, you could spend 400000 out of your pocket on long-term care and only have $600,000 left to live on and leave his inheritance. But what if somebody else, an insurance company, would fork over that $400,000 and pay it out of their pocket as a thank you for using their retirement tools, and you and your family are left with the same one million you already have? Better, 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 ding, 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 ding. We have a winner, don't we? 
Isn't it better if someone else will pay for your long-term care? So yes, of course, we're going to include that as a criteria. More income while you're both alive. More income if one of you passes away for the remaining spouse. More income provided by somebody else or more money provided by somebody else for long-term care. And finally, leaving more money behind to loved ones or charities when you pass away. I don't care if you're somebody that says, I hate my kids and I want my last check to bounce so those boogers don't get nothing. I wiped their bottoms and changed their diapers and they just ripped me off and still live in my home smoking weed. I don't care if you're upset at your kids because your estate plan should say where the money goes. It doesn't have to go to your children. The idea is not to end with no money. If you don't want to give it to your kids, end with an estate plan that says my kids don't get any money. The reality is dying with more money, if you don't have to pay out of pocket for it, is better for the world. You could leave it to world hunger, for heaven's sakes. I've already said we could solve world hunger in one generation with just optimizing the life insurance policies in the country or optimizing the way people handle their estate, the way they take their income. If I can give everybody extra income and they don't want it, give it to world hunger, all of a sudden we feed everybody in the world. We're amazing people and the world gets better. But no, I don't want to do that. I still want to work with Edward Morgan Lynch and let them rip me off so I can rip off the world. No, we do not want that. More income while you're both alive. More income for your spouse if you die. More money for long-term care. More money left behind when you pass away. All at no increase in what you're currently spending or by lowering your fees and spending less. Now we're talking about a good financial plan. Do you agree? If you don't agree, I'd love to know what you think retirement planning is actually about. Are you going to say, you know what retirement planning is about? It's about non-guaranteed income, taking a bunch of risk, being nervous every day, taking a bunch of hits, paying a lot of fees, having nothing to pay for long-term care, and leaving nothing when you die, and dying on the streets without enough money for even a Medicare facility, sucking your thumb like a baby, crying mommy. I don't think that's a good retirement, so write me. If you really think that's better, go ahead and try to make your argument. I might put you on the show. Not sure how it's going to go for you, but I'm sure it'll help my listeners. So how do you get the absolute best retirement plan? Well, folks, you need to go over to Instagram. You need to go over to my Instagram, charlie.jewett is my name or handle or whatever they call it. I know I'm a young man, but I still don't understand all this social media stuff. But my Instagram account, if you search Instagram, charlie.jewett, you'll end up finding a bunch of pictures of me when I was dating. Don't know why they're still there, but hey, why not? And then a bunch of pictures that I put up for to be helpful for retirement. You're going to find a grid that I created. It's going to look orange, and you're going to see in that grid that on the left-hand axis, it's how much you like your advisor from 0 to 10. On the right side, it's going to be the quality of your plan, how good your plan is, how well it accomplishes the things that I just mentioned. And it creates four quadrants. Top left is you love your advisor, or you like them a lot, but your plan is inferior. It's worse in all the ways I just mentioned. Lower income, lower long-term care, lower death benefit. Uh, bottom left is horrible. You like or tolerate your advisor, and you have an inferior plan. If you don't like your advisor, or you don't like them very much, and your plan is inferior, there's no reason for you to stay with them. Just email me, charlie at... at JewettWealth.com, Charlie, C-H-A-R-L-I-E, at J-E-W-E-T-T, Wealth.com. I almost shared my old email address with you. Bad Charlie. Actually slapped my face. I need to shave. That actually hurt my hand. Bottom left is no bueno, no bueno, no bueno. Top left, no good. I don't care if you love your advisor and you are married to them. Having an inferior plan is like sending your kids to an inferior college, driving an inferior car, living in an inferior house when you could have had the other one for the same price or less. But you just said, I got to take care of the salesman. Life's really not about me and my family. All I care about is my car salesman, my realtor, the person that works in admissions in the college, and my financial advisor. All of life is about taking care of those people, not me and my family. Eh, not true. Not true. You're called to take care of you and your family. The salesman means nothing. You should actually be calling them saying, this is what I want. You go get me the best or get out of my life. That's how I want you to talk to me and my team. Email us, charlie at jewettwealth.com, C-H-A-R-L-I-E at J-E-W-E-T-T wealth.com, and you say, I know what I want, or can you help me know what I want? And then, Charlie, I want your team to go get it, and you guys get me the best, or I will not work with you. Why would anybody respond negatively to that? What's the, what's the response you could have negatively to that? Well, I don't want to give you what's best. I want to give you what puts a bunch of money in my pockets, crybaby, crybaby violin. Really? You're going to keep working with people like that? Anybody that responds to that other than saying, well, all you get here is the absolute best at the best price. That's all we do. 
That's the response you're looking for. Now, let's move right. People, come over to the right side. The right side. Always look on the right side of life. Cross over to the right side of the grid on Instagram. If you, on the bottom right, if you like your advisor or can tolerate them, but you have a superior plan, winner, 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 chicken dinner, you are so much better. Tolerating somebody that maybe makes weird noises and talks like a chipmunk from time to time, if you tolerate me and my team, and you have the best retirement plan possible, I'm not there in your house for the next 30 years living your life. You are. What do we matter? Why would you need to like me or my team? Who cares? You don't need to like your car salesman. I mean, yes, if you hate them, they have bad breath, and every time you walk up and say, do you have cars? They punch you in the face and kick your legs. Fine, run away. We're not going to do that to you. If you can like us or tolerate us, you will get the best retirement plan on the planet. Oh, my goodness, compliance just choked on their fettuccine. <coughs> okay, somebody give those guys the Heimlich. Put their glasses and pocket protectors back on. Let's look them in the eyes and go, no. Listen, compliance. Until someone in the country beats one of our financial plans, we're going to keep saying we have the best retirement plans in the country. When someone beats one, we're going to pat them on the back, put them on the podcast. Everybody's going to learn from them. And I'm going to say, I beat every financial plan in the country until XYZ company beat me. And here's how they did it. And now we have added that to our arsenal, and we're still the best. Ding, 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 don't choke on your fettuccine. Best is best is best is best. As a fiduciary, I have to tell you the truth so you can have the best retirement plan here in the country, period, until it's not true, okay? Bottom right, like your advisor, have a superior plan, way better than what you're currently doing. There's nobody listening who can't have a better retirement plan than you currently have. I'm sorry if that's insulting. It should not insult you. I know that you did the best with the wisdom and knowledge that you had at the time. And congratulations. That is, exa that is exactly what you should have done. With a different uh, body of knowledge, with new data, with new skills and new people in your life like me and my team, you can do better, period. You can have more income while you're both alive, more income for your spouse if one of you dies more money for long-term care that you don't have to pay for and you can leave more money behind. By the way, you know what that all means? That means more vacations, more toys, more fun, more life, more awesome sauce in your life. Better life, I've got it for you, no increase in cost, probably cheaper on the fees. But baby, 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 let's go top right. Baby, 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 ah! That's terrible. You go top right, love your advisor. If you absolutely love your advisor, and you have a superior plan or the best plan on the planet, no one can beat it. I have never found this, but my clients have it. If no one could possibly give you more income while you're both alive, if one of you dies, more long-term care or more money when you pass away, you folks have found the holy grail. But you should never have an inferior plan just because you liked the person selling that plan. People, let's go back to an old topic of mine and get very serious about this. This is not a relationship. This is not a relationship. The person you work with for your retirement plan is 100% evaluated not on their credentials, not on the spaghetti behind their name. There's a lot of wolves and sheep's credentials out there. Not on the company they work for, which, by the way, would disqualify most of them. Because if you look at what company they work for, it'll tell you they cannot offer you. They work for Hyundai, and you want a Mercedes. And they're going to go, nope, the answer to everything's a Hyundai. Hyundai, I love you, just not for people who are looking for Mercedes. Or if you're looking for a Hyundai, and your salesman works for Mercedes, you're in trouble. You're going to pay more than you want to and get a car that you do not want. It is not about the advisor. It's not about me. It's not about my team. It's not about who you're currently working for. It's about the fact that your plan is inferior and you could have a better one. It is 100% evaluated based on the results of the plan. Now, when you choose a wife or a husband or a life partner, it is about the person. That's a relationship. They are the product. They are the plan. They are the strategy. You should not have a relationship with your advisor unless they've jammed you into stocks, bonds, and mutual funds and have convinced you that you need to talk every month or two or three to reallocate your portfolio so we can make more money. 
This is not a relationship. It is a purchase, like where to go to college, where to buy a car, where to buy a home. How many of you have a deep, deep relationship with the builder of your home or your realtor where you need to meet monthly to talk about the purchase you made seven and a half years ago and all the things that are still important for some reason based on that? No. You buy the right home at the right time, and then you just go enjoy it, baby. Same exact thing. This is not about relationship. People, listen to this message very closely. Your plan is inferior. Don't think, wow, he sounds so arrogant. Listen to the confidence when Michael Jordan looks you in the eyes and says, I will beat you at one-on-one basketball. You might go, cool, let's challenge. Or, hey, don't play me. Let me find the best basketball player I know and stick him on the court and let's bet on this thing or whatever you do. But as long as Michael Jordan won every single time, he could keep saying with confidence, I will beat you. I will beat you. I will beat you. Advisors who are listening, listen really, really close. I will beat your financial plans every single time. And it is not arrogance until somebody can beat me. I know why you can't beat me. It's the company you work for. It's the products you're using, it's how you design them, and it's the commission you choose to charge, especially for tax-free growth strategies. Or it's the way you design your annuities, which is completely inferior for tax strategies or income strategies. People, you can have a better retirement plan. I want you to purchase your retirement plan the way you purchase everything else in your life that's important. You send your kids to the best college, no matter who works in admissions. You buy the car you want, no matter where the salesman that you know and trust from college works. You buy from the dealership you want. You get the car you want. You make the salesman do what you want. It's not about their recommendations. When you buy a house, you tell your realtor, this is what I want. If they can't offer it or they're not willing to offer it or trying to steer you, you say, screw you. You're fired. I'm going to find somebody to help me get the best people. That is what I do. That is what me and my team do. You get the best retirement, period. And until somebody beats me, I know there's some people tying me because I trained them. Arizona, Chicago, Hawaii, some in Washington. I trained them. Until someone else beats me, I'm never going to stop saying that. So people, if you want the best financial plan on the planet, get in touch. Charlie at JewettWealth.com, C-H-A-R-L-I-E at J-E-W-E-T-T, Wealth.com. Go to Instagram, my Instagram. Go to Google and type in Instagram charlie.jewett and you'll find this picture i'm talking about today of this grid other than that keep listening because you people are the best renovate retirement with charlie jewett that's all folks folks i want to add this in here because i don't know if i make it clear enough my team will help you you cannot get the best financial plan from a name brand insurance company or from one of the name brand mutual fund sales organizations. Their job is to steer you into what they sell, thus hurting you for a living. They have to hurt you for a living. Yes, I think that should be illegal. Yes, I'm working with the insurance commissions and the state and hopefully the SEC and all kinds of people to change that. But for now, there's you and your financial plan. We do not need the world to change for you to get what is best. If you would like to stop being lied to, if you'd like to stop being manipulated, you'd like to move to a system that's about you seeing clearly where nothing is hidden from you, where you see all of your options, exactly how they work, a truth based model, not a relationship or trust based model, give my team a shout out. Email me, charlie at jewettwealth.com, charlie, C-H-A-R-L-I-E, at J-E-W-E-T-T, wealth.com, and we will get back to you as soon as we can. My team will take care of you. Some of you will even talk to me. So I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.